Hey guys, I'm just going to go through Deutsch connectors today. It's mostly about the disassembly and then the re-termination of a Deutsch connector, but I'll just briefly touch on what they are for those that don't know. And there's a few reasons you might want to do this. You might want to re-terminate a bad connection, or you might have bought an accessory like I did. This floodlight, for example, came with a Deutsch connector with an existing lead already connected that they intended for me to strip back and make an inline joint but it's much better to just have your cables landing directly into the Deutsch connector and have as few joints as possible so that's why we're going to go through the disassembly and re-termination today. Deutsch connectors are IP67 connectors that you'll see in the automotive industry. That means they are submersible up to about one meter for 30 minutes. So they are dust tight and mostly watertight for most situations you'll find yourself in, they are watertight. You can get them in two pin, four pin, six pin. There are different sizes, DTM, DT, DTP. And these sizes obviously take different cable sizes. They can handle anywhere up to 100 amps on the high end and 16 mil squared cable on the high end down to 0.25 mil squared cable for these smaller connections. So I'll be using these multi-head ratchets. I didn't buy the specific dies for the Deutsch connectors, but I've got one here for non-insulated single crimps. That works perfectly fine. And you can do something similar if you've got a similar kit. Otherwise, I'll link this one down below. So this crimping kit does not have the official Deutsch head connections. But I'm just going to show you why we can't use the double non-insulated crimp and it's because it's too wide. It's going to crimp the copper portion and the insulation portion, but it's also going to squish the cable. So I'll be using this single crimp head, which is only half a crimp, so I can individually crimp the copper and then the insulation onto the cable. So you will see what I mean when we get to the crimping portion. Now you can buy these kits with proper Deutsch Connect crimp dies, but it is kind of unnecessary and a little bit more expensive but that's completely up to you. So this is a Deutsch connector. All of the Rock 20 lights come with this style of connector. This is a waterproof connector. This is the female end. The male end is hardwired into the light. Now this cable supplied is 1.5 mil and they have a pre-stripped end you can join here to make inline joints. So what I've decided to do is to remove these cables and attach my cables directly. Now to do that, we need a small flat head in here. This orange face here is called a wedge. So we wanna pry that out without ruining this waterproof seal here. This helps seal on the male plug. So that comes out. In here are your two plugs. And it might be a bit hard to see. There are two levers in there that we need to press on as we pull the cable back. Again, with the same size screwdriver, nice and small. Now you have your pins out. This is a waterproof seal on the back. We'll hold on to that because we'll reuse it. Now these pins themselves, we cannot reuse, but what you can do is buy a six-way Deutsch connector. It comes with six pins, male and female. We want the female ones for what we're doing. Basically, buy as many as you want. If you ruin one of these, go buy a two-way Deutsch connector. They're not too expensive. So here's the Deutsch plug that we disconnected before. All we need is cable. Now this is a pre-cut length. I'm just doing it here because it's easier to show you. So this is where I put a little bit of dual heat shrink over. This will cover that change from the twin sheath to the single core. Now when we strip these ends, we need them to be the exact same length. So there is no pressure on the cable inside the plug. It just sits there. From our six-way Deutsch plug or whatever you've got, we just want to take out the female connectors. So there we have two female connectors. You can see with the ones that we've disconnected, there's a very short amount of copper stripped back. Then we have one part of the crimp folded over onto that, and then the rear part folds onto the insulation. I'll be using these ratchet crimps from Nava. There's not official Deutsch ones, but you can make them work. You see how they only have one side of crimp. That's because we only need a really thin crimp on these. I will be crimping it twice, but I'll just move the ratchet head across as I go to crimp each bit. The double crimp ratchet head is a little bit too thick. That is what it looks like. And then the lug will go in there and that will close it up. And you'll see as it hits the curved face opposing it, it will actually bend it back over and crimp it into the cable. The bit that looks like the letter M, the cable will be in there and this crimp will bend that over onto the cable to make a nice crimp. 
We don't need a lot of length. Now we have the cable in there and you can notice the rear crimp is over the insulation. The forward most crimp will crimp over the copper. The other thing you can do is pinch these inwards if it's not going to quite line up with your crimp. So I'll have that bit there. Now I'm just going to squash those closer together so it fits in the die better and definitely curves over on itself. So there you have it, bent over on itself, nice firm connection, I can't actually pull that apart. Now I'll do the same on the rear one onto the insulation and again I'll just like to pinch it in a little bit and with the insulation one I actually start on the next largest die back and once it's bent over and has a nice bend to it then I'll move forward to the forward crimp and crimp it again. And that's just because it is a little bit wider set in those jaws. So that is it after the large crimp and that is it after the final crimp. Now I do the same with the red, make sure the pins are the same length and then I'll show you how to put it back together. Now we have both of our crimps here and what we want to do when we put them back in the Deutsch connector is make sure we have our polarity correct. So all we need to do is match it to the existing ones that come with the lights. We need to remove this rear seal, slide this over our new connection. This is where you want to make sure your dual wall heat shrink's on first. Now depending on how you look at it, you can notice these holes aren't in the middle. With the top end, the active is on the left. The top end is actually this bit, because that's where it sits. That long flat bit is where the wedge will sit. So that is correct once we flip this with red on the left. Now you have your cables in, we need to slide that wedge in. Get a nice solid click there, and that is your wedge complete. Push this rear seal in to complete the waterproofing. Now to try to get a waterproof seal here, ideally you'd have these cores together and not spread apart. So we're not trying to draw wall heat shrink right to the end because that will not close. The plug is forcing them apart. We want to try and close it up where they are joined. So just a little bit like that with some exposed cable there. Okay, that's it. So that's how you disconnect and re-terminate a Deutsch connector. And hopefully that has helped you. Thanks for watching.